So I am just going to share my experience or knowledge of what we call how similar attitudes determine attraction. Let us see why I became interested in it. So in my high school, I became a little curious about things. So that curiosity I am sharing with you and how I searched for meaning in it. And that first curiosity was this in everyday science that Newton saw apple falling down, you know. And this experience led Newton to explore or explain what happens and he came up with this, that law of universal gravitation. So what this law is, like from every science we are taking from physics, not from psychology, any two objects in the universe exert gra gravitational attraction on each other. Now, this is happening in the matter, okay. Then in social study, I read something like this in high school, Aristotle saying, birds of a feather flock together. And apparently you can see the pictures of so many dogs here, not uh, birds, where it says that nothing replaces having a friend. So when we have friend, there must be some kind of force of attraction. Let us go back to the literature. So, when we go to sociology, not in psychology, sociology, two famous psychologists, Paul F. Lazarusfield and Robert Merton, both of Columbia University, they coined this term called homophily, by which we mean that we all have a tendency to be attracted to others who have similar attitudes, values, beliefs, opinions. So you see the background, Newton talking about gravitational force, sociologists talking about how people uh, become friends. What was their method? Typically for sociologists, they would ask people, friends, colleagues, wives, so on and so forth, what are your views about different things, God, money, institution, society. And when you would correlate the two opinions, usually the correlation would be positive and high. So on that basis one would say that friends, colleagues, peers, husband, wife, they are similar. This is the traditional sociological method or approach. Here are some problems now. If we do research like this and we do most of the time, did homophily lead to friendship working together or marriage? or? Did friendship working together or marriage make them similar in views? If two strangers get married, live together, they can become similar. That is also a possibility. So it is not that similarity brought together. Living together made them similar. This is the issue we have here. So causation could not be known. What is cause and what is the effect? So it was a big problem for sociologists to determine which one is cause and which one is effect. So we have philosopher, we have sociologists and now psychologists are coming. So let us see what psychologists did. So the lesson we are learning from philosophy and sociology that attitude similarity leads to attraction. And to us as a psychologist we have a challenge. How do we test this hypothesis? Let us go back to the history now. For this, let us look at this quotation. Allport in 1935, he said, the concept of attitude is probably the most distinctive and indispensable concept in contemporary American social psychology. In 1996 quotation I have brought from Manstead, who wrote in Blackwell Encyclopedia of Psychology. In an oft quoted passage, Gordon Allport asserted that the concept of attitude is probably the most distinctive and indispensable concept in contemporary American social cycle. Few, if any statements this extreme about social psychology could reasonably be expected to remain valid over a period of nearly 60 years because he is talking about 96. Eight, it is arguably true that attitude is still at least one of the most indispensable concepts in social psychology. 
if not the most indispensable one. So apparently philosophers, sociologists talked about attitude and attitude is so distinctive cons construct in social psychology. So we have to see how attitude similarity leads to attraction and this is the theme of the first lecture I am dealing with it. Okay. So let us come back to what is our attitude, how do we conceptualize attitude and here I would like to present two quotations which I like very much. One, this is taken from page 1 of a book on attitude and look at it what, what definition it is. It says attitude is a psychological tendency that is expressed by evaluating a particular entity with some degree of favor or disfavor. This is the first sentence of this book from which I have taken this. That means we have a tendency to favor some objects, some disfavor some objects. The moment we are doing it, we are expressing our attitudes. This is the way. Okay. Now, if it is so, then this is taken from Psych Review 2000. Please pay attention to this quotation. It is difficult to imagine a person who is impartial toward all that he or she encounters and it would be odd to hear someone say, I am completely neutral toward my family, my job, my dog, so on and so forth. And you know the latest literature is that we develop attitude toward any new thing within one tenth of a second. It is so powerful, that is why I said it is an anchor and once you form the attitude, we start processing information based on that attitude. This is the point we have hammered here. Okay. Now, so we understand what is attitude. Now, how do I test that attitude similarity can be a cause? In psychology, typically we follow the philosopher's idea or scientist idea. They say to be a cause, four conditions should be satisfied. The first condition is there should be association between two things. Two things must go together, fire and birds and the flocking together, fire and the smoke. So this is the first requirement, there should be association between the two. The second we say temporal precedence, by temporal precedence we mean cause comes before effect. So temporal order is important. Third one we say there should not be anything other than the cause. All other things should be absent, just the fire, just the attitude, only then we can say they have become friends. So all other things should be controlled and only one thing should be different and that I also learned in my high school textbook by Arun Kumar Datta <laughs> when he said how do we perform an experiment and finally to achieve this we take group of people, people differ in many ways, so we randomly assign to two different groups and we believe that by random assignment to two different groups, the two groups become equivalent to a start with. So these are the four conditions we need to satisfy. One, association, two, temporal sequence, number three, all other things are constant and fourth, group people differ in many ways, so we randomly assign them to two conditions one where there is a cause, another where there is no cause. If there is a difference, then we say this must be the effect. Now, let us come back to the first experiment on similarity and attraction. In 1961, one article appeared. So, this study must have been done in 59, 58 at the same time when Lazarus Field and Merton coined the term homophily. Okay, so, see what he did. Dan Byrne, he surveyed opinions of students on campus. Later on, he made some artificial surveys where opinions would be similar to the student or dissimilar to the student. 
when a students came to participate, he randomly assigned them to two different groups and to some he gave a survey who, which had similar attitudes, another who had dissimilar attitudes and ask them to indicate their attraction that you are going to meet a person. So, two things you tell me, how much you would like this person who has expressed his views on this survey like as you had done before and number two, how much you would enjoy working together with that person. So, he manipulated similarity and dissimilarity and measured attraction and his finding was that yes and a number of things I would like to draw your attention here. Let us look at how he conceptualized attitude and you can go back to the definition I had given favor or disfavor. So, he did precisely like that. Let us look at this environmental protection. Let us look at the six statements we have designed. I am very much against envi environmental protection. I am against environmental protection. I am mildly against environmental protection. At the bottom you see I am mildly in favor of environmental protection. I am in favor of environmental protection. I am very much in favor of environmental protection. Do you see a difference here? First, we have divided six into for and against like favor and disfavor. Then we have manipulated the degree. Neutral point is missing here, fine. So, his method was you see here we have contra and we have for top three statements and bottom three statements are opposed. So, we have you know pro and con to different positions and they differ in the magnitude and so, when we conceptualize attitude, we have for and against and how much? How do we manipulate similarity? Let us look at the trick here. If I survey your attitudes and give you back exactly like this, you would suspect that you have given my own, right? So, we have to use something so that participants take them as credible. So, Burn also devised a method. Let us suppose on environmental protection, participant response is here at number 2, I am against environmental protection. So, how would you manipulate similarity now? We have two options now, either we can go one step up and one step down, same side, then it would, it would be similarity, this is the method he used, got it? Because if we tick on the same, you would not believe me that you have given back my own and asking me whether I am attracted toward myself or not. So, we have to make it credible. How do we manipulate dissimilarity? Again, go back to the same statement. If we are putting here, then what would you do? Dissimilarity means it must go on the other side, right? Similarity should be on the same side, this similarity must be on the other side. So, the trick he used, he said always go three steps apart. So, 2 becomes 5, 3 becomes 6, right, 1 becomes 4, <laughs> something like this, this is the trick he. So, neither similarity nor dissimilarity would be exactly like yours. So, you believe it is somebody else opinion. So, this is the manipul we conceptualize attitude, we are manipulating it in a realistic manner and how did he measure attraction? He developed a scale called interpersonal judgment scale in which four items I have taken for you. First two, one measured intelligence, another measured general knowledge, he said knowledge of current events, but later on I modified that uh, general knowledge. So, it is seven point scale earlier was 6 point scale, you remember attitude. Here we have a continuous rating scales in which the attraction items were the last two items. One personal feelings, how much I would, how do you feel, how much you like, dislike, you see continuous scale we have and how much you would enjoy working together with this person. Original was in a psychological experiment, later on I converted into a problem solving task fine because the students are doing. So, we have a continuous scale here and participant would make a tick marks. 
So that is all. I find out your opinion, manipulate similar dissimilar attitudes, give you back and ask you that before I give you a chance to meet or work with this person, you form an opinion and make few judgments about him. Fine. I simplified this experiment okay. and when he collected data, so if we manipulate proportion of similar attitudes from 0 to 1, he got this linear line and thought like Newton, <laughs> he is so much attached with his equation. Every time we correspond, he says, hey, does my equation work? You know? You know, in my thesis, I in 74, we got very closer at the same Purdue. This was Texas data, this is uh, Purdue University data, so the line is linear, fine. So, Newton has a law of gra universal gravitation. We have a law now where we say attraction toward a person is a positive linear function of proportion of similar attitudes. So, greater the similarity, more is the attraction. So, this became law of attraction. As simple as this, you see how simple experiments we do in psychology, neat and clean, nothing, no confusion. So, this effect is so powerful. We have not come across anyone who said that this finding is not replicable. It is so powerful. And so, I give a number of in different country, this, that and in fact, in 2005, Park and Seller said that if somebody agrees with you, you will start believing that this fellow also shares some gene with me. <laughs> you know, the, this much is the belief in the power of this attitude. Okay. In 71, this much was research, I wrote my thesis, came back to IIT Kanpur, we got distracted. <laughs> I started doing research in another area. I bring you to a second part now. First part we have concluded attraction is a positive linear function of proportion of similar attitudes. Fine. We all thought this paradigm is dead. Nothing would happen to it. All of a sudden in 86, one article appears in JPSP and three things I would like to say that linear relationship implies that similar and dissimilar attitudes have equal and opposite effects on attraction. This is the implication. Rosenbaum, Milton Rosenbaum, he said, I argue that similar attitude does not lead to liking, but dissimilar attitude does indeed lead to repulsion. So, if you have similar dissimilar attitudes and Similarity mean is higher than dissimilarity, we say attraction effect, he said no, it is repulsion effect. Now, how did he test it? So, this one, so repulsion hypothesis simply said, finding someone shares our views does not make us like that person, but finding that he or she disagrees with us does lead us to shun him or avoid him or her that became repulsion hypothesis. By that time, I had moved to Singapore and I was teaching social psychology. So, it brought me back and see what we did. I, so, first let us come back to his two experiments of Rosenbach. What he did, in experiment one, he manipulated similar dissimilar attitudes and also gave photograph of the person you are going to interact. And there is one condition in which he gave only just photographs. So, we have similar attitudes, dissimilar attitudes given with attractive, unattractive photographs, four conditions, and then we have two conditions where we give just photographs, no attitude information. Another experiment he did with democratic and republican delegates in America and said these are the positive personality characteristics, mild or positive and again similar and dissimilar attitudes. That means, he created a control condition. Byrne had dissimilar similar. He never had a condition of no attitude. 
सो रोजन बाम सेट लेट मी गिव ए फोटोग्राफ लेट मी गिव पर्सनैलिटी कैरेक्टरिस्टिक्स एंड देन सी वेदर सिमिलर एटीट्यूड टू एड समथिंग टू इट एंड दिस सिमिलर वुड सब्ट्रैक्ट समथिंग टू इट यू गॉट ए वेरी सिंपल एक्सपेरिमेंट लाइक दिस लेट्स लुक एट द ग्राफ दैट वुड मेक द थिंग्स क्लियर दिस इज हिज फाइंडिंग फ्रॉम द फर्स्ट एक्सपेरिमेंट मे बी आई कम बैक एंड शो यू हियर देन ओके यू सी द लाइन्स हियर this line and this line this is based on similar attitudes this is based on we have photo not so attractive and attractive photographs then we have similar attitudes and dissimilar attitudes and this line is based on when we give only photographs similarly this is mildly positive mildly negative personality characteristics this is dissimilar attitude this is similar attitudes this is based on only personality characteristics what do you notice here similar and personality lines do not differ however the similar attitude line is lower so he said similar attitudes do not lead to attraction in contrast the similar attitudes do lead to repulsion you see somebody's entire work is demolished by two experiments this is the way we we have scientific process here now the question is is it true that's why i put no entry sign he said that similar attitudes do not produce attraction how do we solve the problem now so i suggested to my one undergraduate students lean tan like this is the summary i have given no similarity effect why control condition line similar to similarity condition line why repulsion because control line is higher than dissimilarity line you see like how we test in a simple way how much statistics is required no more than two three tests when we reach the conclusion to my student i said this is not right test of this hypothesis so his hypothesis why this similarity leads to repulsion similarity does not lead to attraction and that became repulsion hypothesis so i advise my student to conduct a new experiment and this is what you see let's look at the criticism any ideal test would compare no attitude with attitude not photographs because photograph is also leading to some kind of assumptions so no attitude versus attitudes so that led me to advise okay we said a students come and i have already done the survey using his method and say you are going to interact with a person and at the moment i am not going to tell you anything you tell me what is your opinion of this person how this person would look like you what do you think his or her attitude should be so you are inferring the attitudes of your peers then i said okay after that this is the second time these are his attitudes now i give them so i have two kinds of ratings now dissimilar similar half similar half dissimilar three conditions i create first stage no information second stage three kinds of information and say how attracted you would be toward this person so i created a condition which is of no attitude information let's look at the findings now see this graph can you interpret this this is the pre acquaintance line this is when similar attitude this is half similar dissimilar this is all dissimilar one got it now how would you interpret it there is similarity effect right there is dissimilarity effect so both similar and dissimilar attitudes are operating fine now so this is what both similar and dissimilar influence the attraction initial attraction right but you can calculate something now this minus this and this minus this if you do so what do you notice that's why i have two vertical line now it is dissimilarity repulsion effect is stronger than similarity attraction 
और सिमिलरिटी अट्रैक्शन इफेक्ट इज वीकर देन डिसिमिलरिटी रिपल्सन इफेक्ट सो बर्न इज राइट रोजन बर्म इज राइट समथिंग एल्स वी आर गेटिंग इट समथिंग एल्स वी आर गेट यू सी दैट दिस इज द डिफरेंस वी आर मेकिंग नाउ कैन कैन यू मेक ए क्रिटिसिजम ऑफ दिस देर इज ए क्रिटिसिजम वी से रिएक्टिव मेथड वॉट इज रिएक्टिव ही फर्स्ट यू इंडिकेट हाउ अट्रैक्टेड यू आर टूअर्ड मी देन आई टेल यू समथिंग सो यू बिलीव दैट इन द लाइट ऑफ दिस इंफॉर्मेशन आई मस्ट गिव हायर एंड लोअर रेस्पॉन्स दिस इज कॉल्ड रिएक्टिव मेथड आई कैन डिफेंड इट हाउ कैन आई डिफेंड If it is so, then how come difference is just small in one case and more in another case? It could have been equally apart, but less similarity effect and stronger. This similarity means, in spite of reactivity, something is operating. Fine? <coughs> no. So we said that we accepted this criticism reactivity, but ruled it out. How I did it? Very simple experiment. i divide you into two groups no information and similar attitudes and say how attracted you are toward this person so no two judgments on you and when we did it it's very clear cut no information 20 participants similar attitude 19 participants look at the two means this is similar attitude mean this is dissimilar one and apparently you can see similarity mean is higher even though i take one judgment so it is not reactivity similarity does produce an effect but that effect was smaller so that was the beginning here that is both similarity and dissimilarity make a difference but there is a departure now original idea was similar and dissimilar attitudes have equal and opposite effects then it became atti similar attitudes have no effect now i am demonstrating both similar and dissimilar have effects and similar have less effect than dissimilar a new issue is coming like in the research you see like my topic is that how attitudes determine and this is what i am carrying you by one by one so here is another thing i had asked experiment in the first time can you guess what would be the attitudes of this person based on that i i know your attitudes and then you have inferred what would be your partner attitude so we calculated and we came up with the idea of assumed similarity and we found out that they had assumed similarity around 0.73 so 73 and 1 difference is 0.27 73 and 0 is a difference of 7.73 and this is what we got one unit similarity and three unit dissimilarity so one hypothesis became that there is a person positivity bias anyone you are going to meet we go with a positivity positive orientation against that anchor that similarity and dissimilarity make adjustments right so one hypothesis became that person positivity bias operates this is the one possibility there are some other possibilities which i will share you so to handle this i ask another honors student to do a developmental study and what she did she asked children of 7 11 15 and 21 years and just like three between subject got similar attitude the similar attitudes and no information about the partner He is one of the NUSS students, right? And two measures we took. One measure of assumed similarity. Like when I don't give you attitude information, I ask you, can you infer? When I give attitude similarity, take you back and say, can you recall wh what were the responses? So that we made perceived similarity, assumed similarity. So let's look at this graph now. You can see. that at two younger age there is no difference between no information and similarity very similar to rojenbaum but as we come to 15 and 21 year old 
we do have differences here. See this difference is significant, this difference is significant. What would be the consequence of this on attraction? So, this one is mean perceived or assumed similarity. You see the age difference here? Now, let us come back to attraction difference here. When you come to attraction, see precisely the same kind of thing we are finding these two differ from dissimilarity, these two differ from similarity and they do not differ. In contrast, when we come to 15 year old, they differ, when we come to 21 year old, they differ and effectively all three are different. So, what I had seen that dissimilarity, similarity, asymmetry earlier, I am able to get with 15 and 21 year olds. At younger children, we do not get it because they are very positive of other people. So, that was it. So, as, but at that time, I did not know. Mediation analysis had entered the literature, but I did not know how to relate assumed similarity with attraction measure. So, we just raised as a hypothesis. Though it went to personality social bulletin, but we did, we did not know, reviewers did not know, editors did not know at that time how to relate these things. So, it went like this. But one issue remains then. Is effect of similar attitude weaker than that of dissimilar because of this bias or because of something else? that something else would be importance or weight. How much importance you give to similarity and how much you give to dissimilarity. Somebody would disagree with you one on that basis you say okay, no more relationship. Somebody, so maybe it is not the difference, it is the importance you assign. That became the issue here. So, at this stage then, now in that developmental study there is another interesting thing we got. According to Rosenbaum, dissimilar attitude is most potent, right? But how come age difference you find in similar condition and dissimilar condition also? If similarity is of no use, there should be no difference in that condition. Everyone should react alike. Another point I made developmentally. So, now the issue, two things became. Is this effect an outcome of adjustment with the anchor or is it because of the weight we assign to similar and dissimilar attitudes? Now, how do we test out? You know, and as I look at my career as a psychologist, sometimes simple ideas do not enter into your head. It takes years and years and decades to come across this. Okay. So, to another <laughs> on our student, we said that here is a challenge. One possibility is this distance on anchoring type, greater distance of dissimilarity than similarity from assumed similarity when attitudes are not known. Another possibility is that dissimilar attitudes take on greater weight than similar attitudes. How do we test it? Let us control assumed similarity, like in age, says we varied assumed similarity. We said let us hold assumed similarity constant and manipulate similarity dissimilarity. And I do not know how this idea came. <laughs> we said very simple, you design two survey, survey A and survey B. Each one has six attitudes. Manipulate similarity in first and second, manipulate similarity in and dissimilarity in the second. So, it becomes a simple two by two design just like the Rosenbaum, but no photograph condition. Got it? Okay. So, two survey we said manipulate similar dissimilar in the first survey, second survey and look at how the four means would look like. That became the point of interest. That effect of attitude similarity in the first survey is it dependent upon the level of the second survey? And we generated three hypotheses. First hypothesis comes from Byrne. 
in which he said there should be just two main effects because similar and dissimilar have equal and opposite effects, two parallel lines. Second one Rosenbaum said in his according to his hypothesis, what did he say? Only dissimilar attitudes lead to repulsion, right? So, as long as somebody disagrees with you, you would reject him. So, when I am manipulating two by two, there is only one condition where you have similar in all two for me and we. In other conditions, we have both dissimilar, half dissimilar, half similar. So, we said those three means should be different from similar condition. So, one means should be significantly greater than the other three which should be equivalent and third one we said which is my asymmetry hypothesis, we said that no, both similar and dissimilar would produce, but effect of similarity would be less at the dissimilar level of the other survey than on the similar level. Now, look at in the graph. So, we made, okay. now here is a challenge, if you predict something which is not linear or which is non parallel, then it may be an artifact that your response measure is not being used in a linear way by the participant. So, you also have to demonstrate that a scale is being used like 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7 point must be used as continuous and not non linear way. So, this is my prediction on attraction measure attraction hypothesis would lead to the first graph, Rosenbaum would lead to the second graph and my hypothesis would lead to the third graph, asymmetry hypothesis, right. So, now you see two graphs predict non-linear lines. So, here I utilize the response to intelligence and general knowledge. If you look at it, because asymmetry should take place in attraction, not in judgment of your competence. So, when I did the experiment now, see the findings? This is the graph for attraction, this is the graph for respect. Later on I have termed you the respect for the person, respect for the competence of the person and this is attraction toward the person here. What do you notice here? interaction is in attraction which I had predicted. There is no interaction in the respect. So, one thing I am ruling out, there is no problem in use of response measure, right. So, now the question becomes, if I test that simple effect you would notice, see a very simple logic. When you look at effect of similarity, this is similar attitude, this is dissimilar attitudes right and this is at the level of dissimilar in the second set of survey, this difference is lower. Why? Because if you go near Mike Tyson, you feel weak, but if you go in front of a child, you feel very powerful. So, when this similarity you see in similar condition, it is more. So, this is the basis of judging which one is more important. So, you see here effect of similar dissimilar or difference is reduced when there is dissimilarity in the second survey. Similarly, effect of similar dissimilar in the second survey is less when dissimilarity is in the first survey. Now, how this idea came? It came spontaneously somehow and we said <laughs> let us look like something this what would happen and this is what we demonstrated and we said that asymmetry arises at the level of weighting of information. Weighting of information means how much importance you attach to agreement and disagreement. That was the end in respect we demonstrated parallel line. So, you remember reactivity was the challenge in the first one, then we came to assumed similarity, then we have come to weight and I do not know where whether you are noticing the change. This is 73, in 92 appears pre acquaintance and attraction, 96, no, 98 appears developmental, 2000 
this one appears. So look at the time lag. It is not that you do and next year you get the idea. It takes some time decades. Okay. So on basis of parallelism we said linear use is true. Now we are saying this asymmetry indicates the dissimilar attitudes relative to similar attitudes assume greater weight or take on greater weight. This is the conclusion. We said weight is necessary and important. We, you cannot ignore it. But uh, still there is a challenge now. Is it at the level of response? So it became important. Now there is another challenge. Is this happening, this weight is taking place? at the level of responding or at the level of paying attention. So another Chinese student came to me and I said, can you test it? And you can see how, what kind of passion the students have. They said, sir, there is something in cognitive psychology. So I said, can you design something that attention gets uh, caught by something? If something it captures my attention, then my responding would become slow. This is the idea we designed to say. And that Chinese student, now he has gone, done PhD, and he is now back at uh, in US. What he designed you? Waiting at attention level. And see what kind of experiments we do. He said, we are going to do a color naming experiment. Now, this paper appeared in 2009. First experiment, th there are many challenges. Byrne said equal and opposite effects I also got in my thesis linear line. Then came repulsion. Then we are saying asymmetry. So if you understand something, you should be able to resolve all these contradictions. That became the challenge. So two tasks were in front. Is this happening at attention level? And can we uh, specify a condition where both similar and dissimilar can take equal importance. This is what we did. So, we did two experiments. Now, in the first one, you come to the lab. I have already found out your attitudes. And when you come, this is not attraction experiment. I am interested in finding out individual differences in color naming. Fine. So, we selected your attitude, then we generated some statements and example I have given that for example, attitude to a divorce would be, so we will make a should refrain from divorcing. We want to have favorable attitude like this. Okay. So, we have a sentences like this and participant is sitting in front of the computer and we display a sentence. We say like Pandora, you do not have to read the statement you have to name the color of that word, blue, red, pink, something like this. This, this is the no attraction experiment. Name the color. Do not read the statement. Because you, if you say somebody do not tell it, then he would go and tell to everyone. The same, same logic we have. And to do that, to control, it takes your energy. That's, that is the logic we followed here. And how we created the stimuli? From the survey, 12 statements where randomly we made it similar, 12 where we randomly made dissimilar, 12 we made which bear general knowledge items. The spiders have 8 legs, India has 1.2 billion people, something like general knowledge question. Some we made XXXXX that became our baseline stimuli, which have no meaning 5x, 6x, 2x, you know, and we have colored different x. You, you got it? Okay. Now, when I am displaying the statement, there is a challenge. How do I display it? So, we designed a method here. So, first I just remember this part. We have favorable, unfavorable statements. Then, we have created 12 baseline control stimuli with x. You know, like you, you see one example I have given 6x, 5x, 3x, 2x, you know, different things are appearing on a screen. 12 filler, we have general knowledge. So, we have four set of stimuli now. I am interested in how you respond to similar and dissimilar. Task is to name the color. 
on the computer screen, but I am mixing exactly half number of stimuli which are irrelevant type, x, x, x or general knowledge type. Okay. And you sit in front of it and look at the kill. All these baseline control they are matched in number of words and letters, even word frequency count we had considered. Because if the difference is there would be confounding. I remember I said all other things must be constant, constant except one. So, we did that. And this is our ingenuity on computer screen you see and that is why I say why in India it cannot be done. For a particular participant, we created three trials. So, on trial 1 he reads should divorce when necessary, where should is as a color rest is black, then we have a black screen, then the same as should divorce when necessary, now divorce is colored, here should divorce when necessary, this one is colored. So, the task is to name the color and press the key. The idea here is if what I have told them not to read name the color. So, if he is distracted by the sentence, what would happen? <laughs> Responding would become slow, that is the logic. So, if we would see x x x responding should be faster because it has no meaning to me. No? Like if you are going, if you are a Hindu, temple can disrupt you, but if you are crossing a mosque, you would not be that is the logic we have. So, x x x should not disrupt you, similar dissimilar should disrupt you, dissimilar should catch your attention more if it takes weight that is the logic we followed. Three trials we created because we wanted to paint different part because one would say no because of sud the difference you get is because of sud or somebody would say difference you are getting because of this to rule it out. And when we did it this experiment worked out. See here sometime things which you think <laughs> is so nonsensical makes lot of sense. What you need to see here? average of these are the three trials you see. So, for x x x this is the latency lo lower latency means faster responding. For similar you find this, for dissimilar you find this and we are measuring in milliseconds. There is some trial effect familiarity effect, but it is independent. What we demonstrated two things we were interested in. First similar dissimilar responding to those stimuli is slower than control x x x x s. Number 2 between dissimilar and similar you see dissimilar is catching you get more disrupted by dissimilar attitudes. It catches your attention automatically. So, that automatic literature we had taken here. So, our first experiment demonstrated the dissimilar attitudes do capture your attention more than similar attitudes. So, waiting hypothesis is supported. Now, the challenge is why sometime equal attention, sometime unequal attention. You see in this globalized world with telephone, Facebook, computer, we are doing more work than we are supposed to do, right. So, our attention our resources have depleted. So, we have developed some default automatic responding type. So, respond giving greater weight to dissimilar is automatic default device. At the same time we say we should be objective, fair, not biased, we must consider take even sided approach something like this. For that you have to have resources. So, we designed another experiment for this again coming from cognitive psychology and look at the method of this. Now, another thing we did here, the 12 similar and dissimilar attitude we had selected. One may say that oh, how did you select your attitude participant may have had some opinion on this. So, for each individual we demonstrated that this effect holds independent of whether what the, uh, Professor Misra thinks about divorce or what I think about God. I said it was because of similarity, dissimilarity, not because of my position, not whether I am favorable or unfavorable. Then next experiment we did, we said cognitive resource is a moderator. 
just like our 15 and 21 year old and 7 to 4, 11 year old, we thought they were cognitively depleted fellow. With adult, we have more cognitive resources. We got idea from there. So, in this time, we said, this time you are supposed to read the statement. This is not color naming, right? So, in one condition, you are supposed to read the statement and press the key and it would be recorded. So, no cognitive load. To other half of the participant, we said, no, no, no. Uh, when you read it, computer would randomly emit a tone and your task is to detect the tone. <laughs> so, the moment you hear the tone, press the key. So, in high cognitive resource condition means low load, we said you read it and detect the tone and randomly on three attitude statement of each participant, the tone would appear. To other half participant, we said, okay, when the tone is detected, the moment you hear, a start counting backward by difference of 7 and the number we used was taken from a cognitive psychology experiment like let us suppose 938. So, you have to remember 931. So, your resources <laughs> are now diverted. This is the logic we followed. And when we did this, this is the finding you are getting. So, you see in the condition of low cognitive load means high cognitive resources, you see again the responding is faster and there is no effect whether they saw three similar attitude, dissimilar attitude or x, x, x. In contrast, when you go to the higher level, see here, when they had to count backward by 7 from 938, means cognitive resource, you are loaded like paying at multitasking type. In that case, responding became slower in detecting the tone and dissimilar took longer time than the other two conditions. The only discrepancy we got, there is no difference between similar and control here. Otherwise, this is what? So, how these experiments, how did I start? How do similar attitudes determine attraction? Look at the history, both have equal and opposite, only dissimilar have effect, similar have less effect than dissimilar. Is it happening because of assumed similarity or is it happening because of the weight? Is it happening at the responding or is it happening at the level of attention? Why did we do all these? By doing all these, now we say asymmetry when there is a load means low resources, no asymmetry when there is no load and cognitive load or cognitive capacity is a moderator now how we pay attention to the weight of dissimilar and similar attitudes. This is what we have demonstrated, but our importance in resolving the controversy. And here I say in a study where similar attitudes outweighted similar ones, dissimilar outweighted similar ones, processic demands were typically high. And how? You know due to requirement of either you have to interact with the person, you have to process photographs, you have to process personality profile. In those cases, we find dissimilar attitudes are more effective than similar attitudes. But when there are no such requirements, when you have ample cognitive resources, when you are older, in that condition, we do pay equal attention to similar and dissimilar attitudes. This is what we have understood. So, here is the summary now. What we have learned out of this research for so many years, those who think like us do exert gravitational force, go back to the Newton <laughs> upon us and we are automatically drawn to them. This is what we have understood. Number two, how much we are drawn to them depends upon our own person positivity bias, it does play a role. And also the wage of weighting similarity over dissimilarity at a particular point of time. This much we have understood. Okay. And the, our default style is in this age of globalization to pay greater, <laughs> give greater weight to dissimilarity over similarity. This is what we have and 
given motivation and ability however, we can pay equal attention to both that requires our time, that requires our effort and in the first lecture this is what I wanted to share with you. Now, imagine one thing 61 this is 2013 tomorrow I will tell you is still we do not understand it. <laughs> this is simple puzzle here I have described how they do it. Tomorrow we talk about why do similar attitude determine you know and how <laughs> simple task like this can be how involving and complex. Another thing I have realized in my life in no research paradigm anything is ever complete. <laughs> no, 1973, then almost we have stopped doing research, right? We okay. went to another area. 90, again we come back. So, 92, 98, 2000, 2009. So, it comes like every decade something. <laughs> you know, it is like a virus growing in your brain, but it depends upon your passion how you do this. Okay, so ask something which. Other questions? Yes. Sir, I have a question uh, especially based on your developmental study where you said that uh, children who are young they generally go out with a very positive attitude towards others. Uh, so, on an application part, uh, can this be used to reduce uh, the feeling of uh, discrimination amongst the population? You are saying that. <coughs> If I'm, I, I, that was the basis that children are more positive of the outside world than the adults. Uh, so, can this be used to increase positivity in them? In all these experiments, what we tell the participants, you are going to interact with somebody. So, the moment we say you are going to interact with somebody, you would say that we become very positive, we dress nicely and we hope this person would be nice, we know all kinds of things. Okay. So, this is the temporary state, but with age in the initial year children are very frightened of others, but when they become a school going right. One region of positivity which we discussed in this paper was they have very rare occasion to discuss things because most of the time they assume we are similar right. So, because of that it appears that they believe that all others would hold opinions and views similar to mine. So, it is not really some kind of chronic characteristics and with adult when we have a chance to discuss the lal or all these people like when we discuss on some issues we agree on some we do not agree. This we become aware much later. So, instead of saying this like a, a stable characteristic, we said because they had a less chance to discuss different things, they take it for granted others are similar. So, that is why dissimilar is making a difference in their case. In other respect, they are assuming similar, he is my classmate, you know, we study together you know he likes me you know something. So, that was the basis of saying, but can this be a basis of developing positivity? If it is so, then giving the right kind of information it is possible. In the same way I would also say by giving the wrong kind of information that do not drink water, do not eat food given by somebody else, what we are putting in their mind that the world is unsafe, unkind, people can trick you. So, do not accept it. So, we are reducing that bias. Like some children if you give they would take it means they have positivity to some say no my parents have told me not to accept anything. So, so it can be used as a mechanism. You know like when I said attitude or that uh, psych review quotation I said actually once we form attitudes we become so biased any further information processing is always against that anchor. Tell to somebody oh, you are going to meet be careful, his entire interaction would be finished. It is so powerful virus 
you know, and just like germ, it grows in the system. This is what I have understood. Yes. Okay. Did you take into consideration the prior attitude of the subjects that uh, before coming to the experiment? Yes. No, no, but you see, like, I, I does it change? With no, the no, no, the attitude change we are, we are not measuring here. All I am doing, I find out how do you think about different issues of this country, your views, right? And I am manipulating similarity and dissimilarity. But in each in case, for example, like in later experiments, you know, when we had manipulated, you may be opposed to something, you may be sub supportive of something. We demonstrated that regardless of your initial opinion, if it is similar, you feel attracted. If it is dissimilar, you feel repulsed. So, your initial anchor is, even though they are controlled, similarity works. That we have demonstrated. But does it change the attitude? That we have not measured. Because that was not the issue. Because in the work of Shelley Taylor, you have seen that work, that if your initial attitude is very negative about somebody, and you give the positive information that you attitude, attitude similarity, it leads to more disliking rather than liking. No. That was her uh, finding, uh, very clearly brought out, that uh, pi attitude is very negative, then similar attitude will lead to what the negative? Yeah, dis the like, disliking. No, no. If the prior attitude is negative, very negative, and then we give positive, then it becomes more negative. Yes. No, because you discount it. Right? No, no. Many times, like if you don't like somebody, and if somebody is saying good thing about it, you know, look at how we react. We discredit yes. <laughs> not that information, even the person who is <laughs> saying that. All these are, but these are different possibilities. You see, like in all these experiments, we select one issue and try to see whether we are able to answer it or not. At in I am Ahmedabad in uh, 93, I was giving a seminar on fair allocation of workload and norm, which appeared in organizational behavior paper. So, after the seminar, I said to the audience that I know this is management institute and some of you would ask me how my research will solve poverty problem of India. So, my research was not directed at solving poverty problem. It was directed at solving my poverty problem and it has solved it. <laughs> so, you know, so, no, no, think about this line. So, in any of these research you do or you should be doing, you have one particular goal which you are seeking. Have you been able to solve it? That should be the, no research is intended to solve all problem. Many times people ask this that, but see somebody wanted to do this, is he able to do it competently? has analyzed, drawn the conclusion, ruled out the alternative hypothesis. You see like a series of objections we had here. One hypothesis came, another hypothesis came, the last question, their own opinion, how the… We dealt with those which were directly relevant to them. It would be like, how did we start with the sociology idea? People get married and they are similar. Is it because of similarity or marriage? Marriage leads to similarity too. We learn that look, this is the way we can get along well. In that case, attitude changes. Or somewhere we say familiarity breeds contempt. Jayang said, family, more you see it, more you like it. <laughs> so, these contradictions exist and we have to see conditions in which one holds and another. And in this presentation, what I have demonstrated that yes, there are conditions where similar and dissimilar attitudes can be attended equally. There are conditions when they would not be attended. And what is the default device? Default is to get swayed more by <laughs> dissimilarity than similarity. And I think that seems to be the fact of life. One disagreement is enough to finish relationship. So, that's the default. But when you think out, hey, we disagreed, we quarrel on a silly issue. This realization comes when? When we have, we are motivated, we analyze, we say it was not the correct position. And many times we hear the two opponents of different views they discussed, and after the discussion they start, they change their views to each other. 
those possibilities exist you people pick up. Uh, there is one uh, aspect of the whole uh, series of experiments which uh, draws a rotation and that relates with the notion of attitude itself. Uh, I think the earlier view was more in terms of disposition. Now gradually it, it moves to the level of responding to situations, stimuli in positive or negative way and then now you have demonstrated that the cognitive mediators are there, how attention is paid, how available attention is divided. Now uh, I, I would like to understand that um, uh, all these theories have used different notions of attitude too. There is, there is some, no, some no. change in, uh, in the nature of conceptualization of, of the phenomenon of attitude. No. I, I just want to... Uh, no, no, Griswar, here still we are saying it is a tendency to favor and disfavor. So that disposition part is there. Even the all-port definition, it is a predisposition to act and he meant tendency actually, we tend to, you see. So that we are retaining. What we are dealing with here is not on attitude per se. We are dealing with, once we have an attitude, how it influences relationship. That, that part I am dealing with it. So original definition of attitude, like a predisposition, like I am disposed to favor you. I am opposed, uh, you know, disposed to oppose you. That attitude I have. But how this disposition leads to relationship, that part I am dealing with. So we have not challenged that. And, and, and the aspect is that uh, it's a neat design to address this issue. But when we go to uh, real life interactions, like in family, uh, there are contradictions. Uh, there are occasions when people have uh, differences, still they maintain the relationship. Now, uh, is there any uh, possibility of no, no. incorporating no, no. such a situation? Because no, no. if we follow this line of argument, then it's very neat and clean how, how dissimilarity will lead to, you know, weakening the relationship. You see, like in this research which I am presenting, I am interested in acquaintanceship, attraction type, you know how attracted. When you come to close relationship and some literature I have taken for next lecture where I took the idea of trust from close relationship and then I have developed the underlying mechanisms, you see. So for this session, it was packaged with just one idea. We manipulate similar dissimilar attitudes and how? how it determines, you see. So it became equal opposite, it became more, it became more or less and it yeah, occurred at what level. Analysis. So that way we have taken like this. Now tomorrow when we come to, I have changed one word between the two sessions, why? There I have taken ideas from close relationship that how without some of those things relationship cannot be formed. But that is a different. But these research or these studies were not intended to solve like you know all problems. They had a particular issue and they were addressed to that issue. And we are saying are we able to deal? But a strength you would see how one problem leads to another and when you think about it leads to and keep you busy just like you are playing and uh, <laughs> <laughs> with your musical instrument. So this is the logic and see like in my high school this Newton thing whenever I teach research method I start with Newton because I got so ability to observe something and starting thinking and doing is a good skill for a researcher and his gravitational idea is the basis of relationship. Objects oppose and you know repel each other, it is so powerful, same thing happens in human beings. Now why it happens, we will uh, talk tomorrow. This another, uh, uh, you are referring to Jain, hmm. very No, 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 tomorrow I come to Jain. And I was, that reference that he is very famous paper that 
Killing no, no. Preference is need Pre no, 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 Ninety eighty no American psychologist, yes. yes. And the, he was saying that the affective responses are not contingent on the cognition. No, he said, and tomorrow I come back to okay. that. His affect primacy versus yeah. affect center. Uh -huh. Tomorrow is the issue. I have read all those literature and that has led. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> Any other question? Ask something. Because sometime when Sir, you I ask. Uh, I wanted to share an idea. Mm. Uh, in the experiment where uh, you changed the color of the words so, and then you asked at fine you have to name the color. Mm. And the whole response was based on the fact that if you engage yourself in reading the statement, then your response time increases. Yes. There is another. If, if the same thing is conducted mm. uh, using an eye tracking device, it can be done. Same thing. And say if initially my response is, if my eye movement is jittery, this means I am searching for the color. So is it that the instruction that was given by the experimenter was actually complied by the subject or not? Okay, that can very easily be tapped. And in case you are reading the sentence, then of course, so the tracker will mm. see how do you select the words. Identification of color is too easy if one pays attention to that. Uh, similarly, uh, say is it that uh, dependent on uh, your re reaction time, dependent on your tracking uh, style, and also on uh, say color versus the non-color part of it, which actually determines the attitude. Okay, uh, possibly a new interpretation can be given. It, it is possible. You see, what we did, from so far we were doing only paper pencil experiment. I give you a survey, you make a tick mark. Here, we said, okay, instruction we gave to the participants. This is a study of individual differences in color naming. When you see a color, how fast you detect it and your speed I am measuring. So, I am encouraging, encouraging them to respond as fast as possible, you remember. But I am telling do not read, <laughs> like control yourself, there we manipulated the load. It is a high load, controlling yourself, not reading it, like I am I am cooking very nice dish and I tell you, you cannot eat it. <laughs> so, that, so, that control, color naming you do. But manipulation I am doing, that stimuli are of four different types something which are similar to your views, some are dissimilar to your views, some are general knowledge question, some are XXX. So, when XXS which has no meaning, you did not read it, it is very fast. When you start reading, then it becomes slower and it becomes slowest when you are reading something dissimilar, because that is catching your something is, is against me, you know. So, that was the logic here, but you can take it. Is it at the time of reading? <laughs> Is it at the time of responding? That would be the next stage which I do not think I can do now. But with eye tracking or mapping, it is also possible to see which region of the brain is activated while doing these things, responding to similar and dissimilar attitudes like positive effect and negative effect. These are the challenges for each youngster. Anything is possible, but you know, see how something can keep you engaged in solving it. But so far you have seen it, tomorrow some of the other thing, like sometime having something like the two measures which I used as a measure of respect, do you think that can be a source of problem for burn? Somebody attacked him based on that two measures. And tomorrow you would see the implication of it. Many times we do in a study many things randomly without thinking, without realizing how it may be changing the process. Okay? Yes. Thank you. <laughs>